take a good look. This is the last time you'll see home. As we pull back, notice those labeled stars. That's the radio sphere. It's a bubble about 200 light years wide. Beyond that limit, humanity is completely invisible to the rest of the universe. Let's speed this up. Earth is gone. That spiral structure? That's the Milky Way. It's a hundred thousand light years across. Think of it like a spinning record. But instead of vinyl, it's made of a hundred billion solar systems anchored by a supermassive black hole in the center. We're leaving our galaxy behind now. See those smaller clouds on the right? The Magellanic Clouds. They look like friendly neighbors, but they're actually victims. The Milky Way's gravity is slowly ripping them apart. It's galactic cannibalism in slow motion. We're entering the local group. That massive shape ahead is Andromeda. It holds a trillion stars, double what we have. And here's the scary part. It's not floating. It's falling. It's hurtling toward the Milky Way for a collision in four billion years. Now, we're moving at effective warp speed. The universe starts to look like a giant spider web. These strands are filaments of dark matter guiding where galaxies grow. The empty black space between them. That's the void, and it stretches for 58 quintillion miles. This scale is called the end of greatness. It's terrifying. Every single dot you see isn't a star. It's an entire galaxy with its own history. At this distance, the universe looks like a smooth sea of sand, and our entire galaxy is just one grain. We're targeting a sector 10 billion light years away. But remember, this is a time machine. Since light takes time to travel, we aren't seeing these galaxies as they are now. We're seeing them as they were 10 billion years ago, back in the universe's chaotic youth. We've arrived. This is Tan 618. It looks like a star, but it's a quasar brighter than a 140 trillion suns. In the center sits a black hole with the mass of 66 billion suns. It is the largest, most terrifying monster we have ever discovered. Okay, pause for a second. Recalibrate your eyes. This looks like a standard star field, right? It's not. Every single point of light you see here isn't a star. It's an entire galaxy containing billions of stars. We're traversing the intergalactic medium, the empty space where galaxies are separated by about six quintillion miles of nothingness. This is the cosmic web, the massive gravitational skeleton that holds the universe together. Let's pick up the pace. We are moving so fast right now that we're effectively time traveling. The light from these galaxies has traveled for billions of years just to reach us. The observable universe is a bubble 93 billion light years across, packed with over two trillion galaxies. It feels crowded, but remember, we're looking at a history book. Because of the expansion of the universe, most of these places don't even look like this anymore. We're slowing down now because we're approaching something wrong. See that bright spot dead ahead? That's not a star, and it's not a normal galaxy. We are 10.4 billion light years away from Earth. Usually, galaxies are just dim fuzzballs at this distance. But this object is screaming at us across the cosmos. It's an anomaly. Let's see what kind of monster is powering it. Target acquired. 
This is Tan 618. It shines with the luminosity of 140 trillion suns. Think about that. This single object is brighter than every star in our Milky Way galaxy combined. It's a quasar. That light isn't coming from fusion. It's coming from gas and dust smashing together at extreme speeds in a massive accretion disk, heating up from friction before falling into the void. And here is the giant itself. This is the largest black hole we have ever discovered. It contains the mass of 66 billion suns. To give you a sense of scale, the event horizon is 242 billion miles wide. You could fit our entire solar system, the Sun, Jupiter, Pluto, everything. Inside this black circle 40 times over, it wouldn't even notice we were there. Let's get uncomfortably close. That black sphere is the event horizon. It's about 1,300 astronomical units wide. Remember, just one AU is the distance from Earth to the Sun. Once you cross that line, reality breaks. Gravity becomes so intense that the escape velocity exceeds the speed of light. Since nothing can go faster than light, nothing gets out. It is a physical barrier to the rest of the universe. But it's not just eating, it's shooting back. Look at these beams launching from the poles. These are relativistic jets, twisting columns of plasma larger than our own galaxy. The black hole's twisted magnetic fields act like a cosmic railgun, snapping up ionized matter from the disk and blasting it out at nearly the speed of light before it can fall in. Now look right down the barrel. If Earth were in this direct line of fire, we wouldn't call it a quasar, we'd call it a blizzard. The particles in this stream are moving at 99.9% .9 light speed. It's essentially a death ray loaded with the energy of a galaxy. Luckily for us, we're watching from a safe distance. Or at least, I hope we are. We're diving straight into the belly of the beast now. Look at that blinding light. It's not a star. It's a feeding frenzy. The event horizon ahead is 240 billion miles wide. That's big enough to fit 40 of our solar systems side by side. All that gas is spiraling in at near light speed, generating enough friction to heat up to millions of degrees. It's a quasar, a beacon so bright it drowns out the entire galaxy hosting it. And then, silence. We've crossed the threshold. Outside, Tone 618 shines with the power of 140 trillion suns. But in here, it's absolute darkness. We've passed the point where escape velocity exceeds the speed of light, meaning no signal can ever report back what we see. We're falling toward the singularity, a point where space and time, as we know them, simply cease to exist. It makes you wonder, is this the end of the story or the start of a new one?